At City Field in New York, the New York Mets play the Pittsburgh Pirates. Friday Night Baseball is presented by Jeep. New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by Verizon. Don't miss a moment of Mets baseball on the largest, most reliable 4G LTE network only from Verizon. By Bob's Discount Furniture. Shop for untouchable values at the touch of a button at mybobs.com. By Astoria Bank. At Astoria Bank, the difference is wanting to make a difference. Visit astoriabank.com. By Geico, the number one insurer in the New York market. And by Jeep. Visit jeep.com today. Well, the news has gotten out. The Mets are red hot. They've taken a four and a half game lead in the National League East. So what happens when you're hot? The fans stream to the ballpark and the Mets have had some huge crowds lately and they try and keep it going before another big one tonight. And a pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome to City Field. Gary Cohen, Keith Hernandez with you tonight as the Mets open a three-game weekend series against the Pittsburgh Pirates. The Mets are rolling 11 wins in their last 13 games. They come off a four-game sweep of Colorado, and it's common knowledge that the Mets have the easiest schedule in the National League for the remainder of the season, but not easy this weekend. They play the Pittsburgh Pirates, one of the best teams in the game. Well, they're the team that uh, got the Pirates going, the Mets, earlier in late May. Uh, they got it swept in Pittsburgh, and from there you see the standings. They were a lot closer. The Cardinals just refused to lose. But after that series, the, the Pirates caught fire out of 17 and 9 June and July. They have a fabulous bullpen, a solid rotation. Their one weakness, though, is their defense, and particularly on the infield. Now, when the Mets arrived in Pittsburgh in May, their superstar center fielder, Andrew McCutcheon, was off to a slow start. Slow no more. He has had a fabulous last three months. Oh, he's having an all-star year. Coming into the game tonight, hitting 299 uh, in his last 83 ball games, going back to May 6th, hitting at a 331 clip with 16 home runs, 62 RBIs. So uh, he plays a great defense in center field, has not committed an error this year. He's one of the great all-stars in the National League. Two teams with great rotations, but both will go to the back of the rotation tonight. Bartolo Colon will pitch for the Mets. He's been up and down each of his last five starts. Well, his last start in Tampa was a so-so start. It got off to, to, a, to, a, to a good start, but he kind of faltered in the middle. Uh, he's 4-2 and two career versus Pittsburgh, and he'd like to join the train here of this Met rotation that just keeps throwing out big, powerful games. And with A.J. Burnett on the disabled, as Jay Happ, the former Philly, makes his second start for the Pirates. So I remember him back in 2009 as a very promising rookie left-hander with the Phillies, but since then his career has just kind of gone downhill. He's bounced around, started this year in Seattle, got off to a hot start, fell down, fell apart. Had us one start so far with the Pirates this year. It was not a good one, and he got a loss, and he's trying to find his first win in the Pirate uniform. So it's the Mets and Pirates opening a big weekend series at City Field. All the action coming your way tonight right here on SNY.
to you by Jeep. Visit Jeep.com today. Get to City Field for your chance to see the Grammy Award winning Zach Brown Band Friday, August 21st and Saturday, August 22nd as part of their Jekyll and Hyde World Tour. Purchase your tickets at Mets.com slash CBB. Your Coldwell Banker home field advantage. The Mets through 60 games at home have their best ever home record. Polo Ground Shea Stadium City Field best. 1986 fifth on the list. Come on Keith. Oh it's all right. We finished strong. Bartolo Colon always having fun. Set to take them out. His first pitch is coming right up. Rockies featured great pitching, timely hitting, and one very important bird. The Mets' second four game sweep this year, as many as they've had in the last eight years combined. Singing like a canary. Yes, indeed. Now it's Bartolo Colon taking them out against the Pirates. Your Hyundai starting lineup for Pittsburgh. No starting Marte. He hurt his hand. He's out of the lineup. They actually held the lineup till about an hour before the game, hoping Marte could play, but he cannot. So Travis Ishikawa gets the start in left field. Pirates have been scoring. They've been the highest scoring team in the National League since the first of June, and they'll take on Cologne tonight. And you take a look at the Jeep numbers on Bartolo Cologne. You the walks stand right out. Five intentional passes. So really only nine in walks and 134 and a third. That's incredible. Gregory Polanco has been red hot since they moved him up to the leadoff spot. Polanco struggled early in the year, but he's really gotten it going. The 23 year old Phenom who came up last year. Cologne's first pitch of the night on the way. It's up and away, and we are underway at City Field. Pirates 20 games over 500. They just came from St. Louis. They arrived at about 4 o'clock this morning. 
after losing two out of three to the Cardinals. They won last night, scoring seven runs in the top of the first inning and then hanging on for the win. And Cologne throws that two seamer on the inside corner, one and one. They lost two out of three in St. Louis. They should have took two out of three. Their defense let them down again. That's been a sore spot for this ball club. He'll walk around deck, then Andrew McCutcheon, 1 1 to Polanco, thinks about a bunt and takes outside, 2 and 1. Well, the Pirates have the best record in the National League since they faced the Mets in May. The second best record, the Cardinals. And that's why they've only gained right. two and a half games on St. Louis in that hot stretch. Polanco pops it up into shallow left. And New Anacespitus is there to play it. And that's the first down of the night. And we'll take a quick look at your four and a half game leading New York lovable Mets. Left field Cespedes, Lagaris in center, hit the home run again. He's back in that lineup. Infield Flores gets a start at shortstop. Kadire over at first base. Uribe, the left hander on a mound in J half. And then the new call up, Anthony Recker, gets the call behind the dish. He do old call up. He. Yeah. Cologne have worked well together this year. Here's the Pittsburgh native Neil Walker, who has hit all of his 11 home runs as a left hand batter, and he drives one deep to right center, headed toward the wall, and that ball is out of here. Neil Walker, first pitch swinging, hits his 12th home run of the year, and the Pirates jump out to a 1 0 lead. Second straight day that the opposition's second batter has hit one out of the ballpark. Yesterday, DJ LeMayhew, and today, Neil Walker. 19th home run given up by Bartolo, only the ninth to uh, left handers. First pitch fastball down the pipe here. And no doubt, watch Curtis pull the reins on the horse and say, okay, I can't get there. So 1 0 Pittsburgh. And now Cologne faces Andrew McCutcheon, who's just been on a tear since early May. And a check swing foul ball. Remember early in the season he was struggling with a bad knee. He was trying to play through it. This is Walker's home run. Beautiful swing. Walker right there. Switch hitter. Better left hand hitter. And the off speed pitch fouled. Also two check swing foul balls for McCutcheon to start the at bat. And running that fastball in and trying to establish in early. Anyway, before the Mets played the Pirates in May, he was struggling with the knee. And then in that series against the Mets, he went six for ten with two home runs and a couple of doubles. And he's been rip roaring ever since. And he ties him up. Did he go? He went around. So Cologne with a very unusual strikeout of McCutcheon, two check swing foul balls, and then a tie up inside. And that's the second out. Uh, McCutcheon does not agree with Bob Davidson. And oh yes he did. He, he did come across with the wristies. Check it out. Yep, 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 yep. He's and taking his time. Shaking that right wrist. He might have hurt that a little bit on the swing. So two out. Here's Aramis Ramirez reacquired by the Pirates at the trading deadline. And he pops one foul. Ramirez started his career with the Pirates as a 19 year old back in 1998. Spent six years with Pittsburgh and came back at the deadline and deal with Milwaukee. Intends to finish his career this season and hopes to do it in the postseason. 16th game for Ramirez in a Pirate uniform. And Paul picks off the outside corner with two. Hitting 237 with seven RBIs since the trade. There are his career numbers. A very, very, very nice career. 37 years old. Long ahead 0 and 2. And Ramirez takes just outside. Long dialing up to 92 in the first inning. Well, you remember, Gary, when all before Sandy Alderson made all the moves, uh, the one bat he got, I was always saying, why not get Ramirez from Milwaukee? Turned out he even got a better bat in I feel in Cespedes. Probably the best bat out there. And that was the one guy you heard was available. You didn't really think the Mets were in the hunt for him. Well, the two teams that appear to have done the best at the trade-in deadline certainly the early returns so are the Mets and the Blue Jays. Yes. Blue Jays got David Price and Troy Twinowitzki. It's hard to match that ball. And they've won 11 straight games. 
By the way, the Blue Jays, their second 11 game winning streak of the year. First team since the 54 Indians to have two 11 game winning streaks in the same season. 1 2 from Cologne, and Ramirez hits it down to third, and Uribe throws him out. And that retires the side, but not before Neil Walker gives the Pirates the early edge with his 12th home run. That's come to bat down 1 0. Facing four lefties this week, including Jay Happ tonight. So Juan Lagares gets another shot at the leadoff spot. He had a tremendous series against Colorado. Lucas Duda out of the lineup again today, not because it's a lefty, but because his back is still a question mark, hoping to be able to play by tomorrow as the Pirates roll out 32 year old Jay Happ. Well, Happ uh, versus the Mets over his career has nine appearances, seven starts, three and two with an ERA high fours. Got off to a hot start in Seattle, but uh, boy, his June just fell apart. And his July was even worse. Juan Lagares leads off, takes outside from Hap. Lagares in the series against Colorado, five for ten, two doubles, and then a three-run homer as a pinch hitter in the game yesterday to put the capper on the Mets' 12-3 win. Well, uh, oh, there's tough. Oh, tough. He's politicking. Look at this. Gum for everyone. And he hasn't got the long sleeves on. It must be warm. Wait till the weekend. Be a little warmer tomorrow and even hotter on Sunday. Well, you know something about the Mets. Uh, you can say, well, they they swept a bad Marlin team on the road and a four game sweep of a bad Colorado team. But you know what? When you win, you've got to beat up on those on those second division teams. The Mets have done it. Two and two to Lagares with Granderson and Cespedes to follow. For Jay Happ, just his second outing as a Pirate after coming over in a deadline deal from Seattle, taking the spot of A.J. Burnett in the Pirates rotation. Burnett hoping to come back in September from elbow problems, but nobody knows for sure. And Lagares bangs one right at Neil Walker. And that's the first out. And we'll take a look at the Pirate defense. It's brought to you by Coors Light. They're 14th in errors in the National League with 82. That's a ton. Gong, not Kang, folks. That's it. He's the shortstop. The Korean, he is uh, having himself a fine year. Chris Stewart, not the starting. Uh, what's the matter? I don't think I was waiting for you to finish with the defense. You're laughing. But <laughs> your comments about. Kong, I thought were hilarious. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, just get everybody to pronounce the name properly. I think that's great. I put it on my scorecard, Gong, like Chuck Barris Gong Show, because I don't want to mispronounce <laughs> it. Granderson hitting second for the second time in this homestand after batting leadoff all year, and he takes a strike. Curtis, for some reason, has never had much luck 
against the Pirates. He's four for 58 in his career against Pittsburgh, an 069 average with no home runs against Pittsburgh. And half ahead of him, one and two. And Curtis having himself really a nice season. Uh, 20 home runs, just slugging percentage 450. On base percentage almost 350. Boy, he's just really taken to that leadoff role, even though he's hitting second here. The only thing he hasn't done well this year is hit lefty. Right. Which is something he's always done fairly well, but he's hitting just 154 against left hand pitching this year. A lot of walks. This is the Granderson that Sandy Alderson, uh, I think, imagined. Not imagined, that's not the right word. The guy who was expected. Envisioned. Yeah. That's the word. Well, signed him to a four year deal. This is the second year. Last year, more of a middle of the order hitter. This year, top of the order, where he started his career in Detroit. And he goes down on the slider. So, half past his first strikeout, and there are two out. Well, just as the Pirates, there's a little slider here, took a little off. Curtis swung through it. Both teams are giving the back end of their pitching rotation. So the Mets are, the Pirates are not going to face Syndergaard or DeGrom, and the Mets are going to miss their big two here. It's Cole and Liriano, and of course Burnett, who's on the disabled. Though. Right. So here's Cespedes. Two hits yesterday. After hitting his first National League home run on Wednesday night. A little up and in music, Chen music that pushed him off the plate, and the next pitch was a breaking ball down the way. He deposited over in the right field bullpen. See, he hasn't had much luck against Hap, just three for 19. It's, it's always nice to see that. I'm sure that the brushback pitch was unintentional. But you always want to see your hitter go, okay, make you a little more angry, okay, and bear down, and that's what he did. It was against Christian Bergman Wednesday night. <laughs> Two and one to Cespedes. I mean, I tell you what, uh, that that uh, Colorado bullpen, you don't want them anywhere near the those grass fires in California right now. Just keep them away. Like an accelerant. Cespedes drills one down the line and he's got himself an extra base hit. Well, you guys have been talking about what a great breaking ball hitter he is, and he keeps showing it. Well, Two he's, out double for Cespedes. He's not, I'm not making judgment on him, and we know he can play. I mean, this is the best athlete on the field in the Met uniform. There's no question. He's been a little out in front, even right there, Gary. Uh, you know, it's a new uniform. It's a new environment. It's a new fan base playing in front of new fans. Uh, great, a, a lot of expectations. And it takes a while to get in the groove. Sometimes you come out hot and you, and you get it going right away. And he's been doing. I'm waiting for him to get hot. And if he gets hot and takes off, this guy can carry it. Well. So a runner in scoring position for Juan Arebe. Rebase had three career at bats against Jay Happ, three for three with a home run. And even though he's only hitting 200 in his 16 games as a Met, it seems he's already had half a dozen big hits. Friday night. <laughs> 94 from Happ. That's about where he'll top out a ball and a strike. Nice crowd. A lot of people still milling back there behind center field. And that, can you call the food court back there, can you? The Shake Shack region. Well, come on back and sit in your seats and watch the game. Well, the nice thing is that they've got the big TV screen back there so they can watch. And they get the audio, too. They get to listen to us. Oh. That's what I think the real problem is. Well, go say hello. They, they, they should. Hey, well, guys. How are you? We'll turn the volume down you so you can come to your seats the, uh, and watch the game. See the guy in the Keith Road jersey right there with <laughs> yes, the captain C? Yes. <laughs> to, to the rebound. I mean, he can stand there and watch you on the screen and get his burger, or he can sit in his seat. Maybe go to Keith's grill instead. Well, that's true. That's on the left field line, folks. We don't know where it's at. <laughs> Bottom level. Two two to a rebate and he yanks one foul. I like watching your rebate hit. He is unorthodox. Uh, 
you know, I just hate to generalize, but he is such a, a Caribbean hitter, and I just it's it's just they're cut and slashers. You don't know how he does it, but he is he does it, and it, it always was fun for me to watch guys hit like this. And it's something you wouldn't teach, but he does have the basic fundies of a swing of keeping his hands back, and he slashes and he stays level on a high ball. Um, he's a dangerous, dangerous hitter. Three and two to Uribe with Daniel Murphy on deck. Cespedes is second and two out, and Uribe takes mm. strike three called fastball from half gets him looking to end the inning. He knew it. That had the, that was a good pitch. Second strikeout for Hap. And a rebay called out on strikes. One nothing Pirates. Gong leads off the second inning for Pittsburgh and takes a strike for Bartolo Colon. Gong may turn out to be one of the best bargains ever in the international market. Yes. Came over from South Korea, 28 years old, and he has had a great rookie season. He didn't start the season uh, in the lineup. Uh, he must have moved in a little bit later. The starting shortstop was struggling. Jordy, up. Jordy Mercer. Yes. And then he got hurt. And on the outside Ooh. corners of three pitches, and Cologne gets Gong looking, and Gong rather incredulous with Marvin Hudson's call. Well, I think it's outside, but if you're cons consistent, you know, no hitter's going to like that, and every pitcher is going to absolutely send him flowers. So Gong goes away unhappy, and Pedro Alvarez will step in back in his hometown. Alvarez, who went to Horace Mann High School and then started Vanderbilt, hitting 244 on the year, and he has torn up the Mets in his career. 323 lifetime against Mets pitching. And he has been red hot. Been hitting for some home runs. Been pulling more lately, they say, in which they tried to get him to go to left center field, but he's just a big power guy. Well, they moved him this year. Good changeup from Cologne. They moved him this year from third base to first base because he was having so much trouble with the throws but he's been kind of a disaster at first base as well. It's not easy over there 16 errors at first base this year for. And if I had 16 errors oh my goodness. That's a good slider by Cologne one and two. Well. It's eventually going to happen and one would suppose that Alvarez will go to the American League and be a DH. Yeah clear that he doesn't have a position that he can adequately play. 
but it'll be another year after this before he can be a free agent. He's really built like a young Prince Fielder, but taller. Look at his big legs, lower body is a lot like Prince Fielder's. He's a big, strong kid. But he's another guy that chases chases balls in the dirt, chases off-speed pitches away. 2-2 two -two from Cologne. And he gets him on the changeup. Back-to-back strikeouts for Cologne to start the second. Bartolo didn't have a strikeout in his last start against Tampa Bay in six and two-thirds. Got three of them already tonight. Out in front. Hmm. He's got a nice swing. So now two out of nobody on. Here's Travis Ishikawa playing left field tonight with Starling Marte still sideline. Marte hurt his hand while swinging on Tuesday and has only played briefly since. Ishikawa has bounced around the last few years but had a memorable moment last year playing for the Giants. He hit the walk off home run against the Cardinals in game five of the National League Championship Series that sent the Giants into the World Series. That's a moment that he can take with yes. him forever. Chris Stewart, backup catcher, getting the start tonight. He's hitting eighth in the order. Cologne behind Ishikawa, 2 0. And he yanks one right to first base where Kadire grabs it to end the inning. 1 2 3 for Cologne in the top of the second. Murph will lead off the bottom of the second. Mets down 1 0. At bat, the number one app for live baseball. At bat, it's up to the moment at any moment with in-game highlights, look-ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, statcasts, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Daniel Murphy leads off in the home second against Jay Hat. That's down one nothing. Murph fastball away. Murph has had a struggle against left-handers, but he's been steady, he's hitting only 221. But that's a bit deceptive. He's been on the rise, and more importantly, Merce hitting 307 with runners in scoring position. He's been very clutch. And he's been hot against everybody lately. Nine game hitting streak, hitting 385 over the nine games. You just got to tell Murph when, when Skipper wants you to play deep, concede a run, and you get a ground ball, concede the run. Go to first base and make the play. <laughs> you saw that yesterday. I did. Murph yesterday also. Hit his 213th career double, which puts him fifth on the Mets' all time list for doubles and only one behind Howard Johnson for fourth. He's a doubles hitter, we know that. 
To Dyer on deck, Flores behind him. And Hap falls behind on Murphy, three and one. Hap, by the way, has not been adept at getting left hand hitters out this year. The lefties are hitting 299 against him, 17 points higher than the right hand batter. Over his career, he's been more of a 50 50 guy. And Murphy drives one in the right center for a base hit. Polanco cuts it off deep, and Murphy will settle for a leadoff single. So the Mets have their second hit against Happ, and Murph has a 10 game hitting streak. Very focused, Murph. No wasted take back. Look at that. Nothing wasted. Bat right to the baseball, I guess, for you. Younger generations out there, you younger whippersnappers, I guess it's called squaring it up. I can dig it. So let's see, you've used one outdated term in whippersnapper and another in I can dig it. <laughs> it's good. You're getting more and more contemporary all the time. Michael Kadire takes a fastball for a strike. First first pitch strike that happens to him tonight. <laughs> Kid you because we love you. Well. Kind of have fun up here, right? Kadir's third game back from the disabled list, and he's three for eight since coming off. And he has looked rejuvenated since resting that bruised knee for a couple of weeks. Getting the start against the left hander tonight, playing first base. Flores hitting seventh in the order. He's on deck. And Kadir hits a double play ball right at Ramirez. Walker with the turn for the easy 5 4 3 double play. Two out and nobody on. Pitch. Pitcher's best friend gets you out of get you out of trouble. And there's something you know with the Mets upturn. Mets have been turning double plays with consistency, part of their resurgence, their explosion upward. Everybody, everybody knows it's the offense, but the defense is a very big component too. Well, of course. That gets absorbed into those uh, those wonderful pitching statistics that the Mets are putting up day by day. That's a lot to do with it. Flores finds the hole and he's got himself a two out hit. And they played him as a pull hitter, left the right side open, and Wilmer took advantage. See, Wilmer can do that. He can situational hit. And you get a runner on first base, nobody out. He can do that. That's called, you know, the runner on first. That sets up a first and third. Makes him a better player. I like the fact that Polanco, how often do you see that guy go down on his knee on a routine ground ball in the outfield just to double? Make sure the ball doesn't get through your wickets. Gosh, I haven't seen that in a long time. Here's Anthony Racker. His first appearance is his latest stint in the minor leagues. He's been sent down a couple of times this year. Called back when Travis Darnell was ready to play five, six days a week so that Kevin Plowacki could go down to AAA and play every day. That was the smart move. Wrecker is hitless in his last 20 major league at bats. His last hit came June the 3rd in San Diego. So I'd say he's overdue. And Hap misses inside. Both of Wrecker's home runs have been off left handers this year. Both came in the same game in Chicago. It was uh, Travis right. Wood, right? That's right, didn't have that game. I missed that, sir. All night games in Wrigley. What a drag. To an auto Wrecker. That's another outdated term. Out of a drag. Buckingham's. <laughs> 1967. Yeah. What was it, 67? That's 48 years ago. Mm, eighth grade. <laughs> Flores at first and two out. Cologne on deck. And record takes high and half pitching like he wants no part of record with Cologne in the on deck circle. Record doesn't get a lot of hits, but he certainly is dangerous. And most of his home runs over his Mets career have been meaningful ones. Jay Happ now with his fifth big league team.
And that's a borderline strike, three and one. Mets fans might remember that Hap's major league debut came against the Mets. That was in the middle of the season in 2007. He made only one big league start this year, it was against the Mets in Philly, and it didn't last long. And then he came back the next year, and his second big league start was also against the Mets. But he had little enough time those first two seasons that he was still a rookie in 2009, and he finished second in the rookie of the year balloting to Chris Coughlin, who was then with the Marlins. And it sounds to, like it wasn't a big rookie class. Coughlin and Hap, you know, finished fourth in the balloting that year. Andrew mm -hmm. McCutcheon. Well, there's your, there's the there's the star that came out of that group. Exactly. Three two, and record takes ball four, and the Mets up two men on. First walk given up by Hap, and Cologne will come up with a couple of men on base. The lows never stop improving. Mets have been raging hot the last two weeks. 11 of their last 13, averaging 5.3 runs per game after averaging just three and a half runs per game to that point. And the pitching has been splendid as it has been all year. So Cologne, who has six hits and three RBIs this year, has a chance to do some damage with the Mets down one nothing. And Bartolo up there in swing mode, nothing won. Bartolo does not have a bad swing. He's very loose with his hands and wrists. You know, he hasn't got, he tries to get a rhythm going. He's once every fifth day. It's not easy. In this case, once every tenth day since he didn't get to hit in Tampa the last start. And he didn't lay off the ball and strike. So, a nice 10 and 2 start of for August. For your Metsies. That's sweet. Different team in August than it was the first three months. Popped up, shallow right, Walker out to call, and that retires the side. So the Mets strand a pair in the second after two, one nothing Pittsburgh. Steve, dogs and babies, I'm telling you folks, get your pictures on if you just give us dogs and babies. A very happy young baby right there. Get to City Field tomorrow when the Mets take on the Pirates and stay after the game for a special post game concert featuring Neo. Neo. And that's Yo. Post game concert is included in the price of your ticket and it's all presented by Pepsi. We're just trying to get you contemporary now. Purchase tickets online at Mets.com slash concerts. It's just you and I for a while. The more here. times you say Neo, the more hip you sound. There's a sweetheart. Look at that. Yeah. Mom's true to the orange and blue. 
Nothing like a ball game with dad, huh? Here's Chris Stewart leading off in the third. Stewart, the former Yankee, actually now with his sixth different major league team. Lifetime 235 hitter. Back up to Francisco Cervelli, also a former Yankee, who's having a terrific year. You know, you thought that the Pirates would really suffer for the loss of Russell Martin, but between Cervelli and Stewart, they've actually done pretty well behind yep. the plate. Well, Cervelli doesn't have the, the pop, but he's certainly he's an energetic player. I mean, everybody knows him from the Yankee days. But hitting 300 with 300 at bats. One and one to Stewart. And yeah, it's right in there for a strike. One and two. The pitcher Jay Happ on deck, who does not cast a very menacing shadow at the plate. And then Gregory Polanco against Colonna gave up a first inning home run to Neil Walker. Has retired his other six batters so far tonight. And that's drilled into center field, and Stewart's got a leadoff hit. So the Pirates get the leadoff man on second hit against Cologne. Right down the middle. And that's where Bart, anybody gets hurt. One it away, and it's right down Broadway. Sets up bunt here, and Uribe in real tight at third base. Almost a guarantee that Hap will be bunting. Lifetime 089 hitter. Put the pressure on the pitcher. He's, he's there to bunt. And Uribe is certainly doing that. So you got a first baseman over there in Kadire who's had some knee issues. Make him he's got to hold the runner on. He's got a lot longer, a lot, a lot longer way to run to get the field the ball. That's where you want to bunt it. Kadire making his eighth start of the year at first base. He got a runner at first, and Stewart doesn't run very well. So if you can charge it, you got a chance for a force. Half fouls it off, and now it's 0 and 2. Gregory Blanco making friends. It's nice to see the Pirates competitive again, is it not? Well, they had the two decade drought. Of winning records and postseason appearances that ended two years ago, and now trying to get to the postseason for the third straight year, and certainly in position to do that. They're in that first wild card spot. Strike three called, not turning away, but Cologne picks up his fourth strikeout, first time through the batting order. Well, that's all that good movement. Throws it and starts at the hip of the left hand hitter. And you go, oops, and guess what? It comes back over the plate. And it starts out as a strike. It shouldn't happen. Got plenty of plate. That's a pitcher. Go get him out. Get the next guy out. So one out and one on. Now Polanco fly to left his first time up. Stewart at first and one out. And Polanco slashes one down the left field line. And Cespedes across the line to get it. And just enough room for the second out. Cut him out. F7, first two at bat, same pitch, throwing that little dead fish on the outer outside corner. I like the stare down from Cespedes. Almost daring Stewart to tag and go. We have yet to see Cespedes unleash a throw yep. of any meaning. He's got one of the great outfield arms in the game. Here's Neil Walker, who homered his first time up, his 12th home run of the year. Walker's an interesting case. He's a hometown kid, a Pittsburgh native, first round pick 11 years ago, has dedicated his life to this franchise, but he's a free agent at the end of this year, and he's already turned down a couple of Offers that the Pirates have made. So it's going to be very interesting to see whether the local boy moves elsewhere. Good looking two seamer by Cologne is one and one. 
Walker has been a very consistent player over the course of his career. Lifetime 273 hitter. What's he hitting this year? 273. Hit his 15 to 20 home runs a year. Hit 15 this year. He's a little bit down. It's been one good start, one bad start the last month or so for Cologne. Got himself an early lead against Tampa Bay last time out, couldn't hold it, wound up giving up the go ahead home run to Richie Schaefer in the seventh inning. That beat him four to three. Took a little off there, and it's two and two to Walker. Good spot. Two two coming. Fouled away. Well, that's interesting when you think back at the beginning of the season. You remember who started opening day for the Mets? Martola for Yeah, Martola. He's gone from being the opening day starter to being the fifth wheel. Which is no knock on Bartolo, but only an indication of how far the Mets pitching staff has come. Harvey rehabbing, DeGrom in his second year, Syndergaard coming up from the minors, yep. Nice having his best season. Syndergaard has been there. Right back to Cologne. And the side retire. Lead off hit for Stewart. He's stranded at first. Mets will start their second time through the order in the bottom of the third, down one up. Has given up three hits and a walk first time through the batting order, but unscathed. Now the Mets will start the second time through with Juan Lagares to lead off. Lagares grounded out his first time up. Granderson and Cespit is to follow for the Mets. Thirty two years old came out of Northwestern he's a Chicago native. Third round pick by the Phillies in 04. Curtis Granderson on deck. And Lagares slugs one into center for a base hit. McCutcheon over quickly to get it. Now Lagares will hold it first. Let's get a leadoff hit for the second straight inning. 
Now Curtis Granderson coming up. And Met sitting coach Kevin Long, who's known Granderson longer than anybody in this organization, talks about his recent resurgence. The main thing was just to get him short, uh, eliminate movements, uh, get him down and, and ready early, uh, and then control his head movement throughout his swing. We got his hands in a good spot, and uh, from there, um, you know, it's, it's pretty simple. And, uh, you know, he's been able to do a lot of good things for us, and, and again, it's just because of uh, how short and consistent he is to the ball. Well, it's very simple. If you want to. Have the least amount of movement. Don't want a long swing. He's right. The, the one thing I take out of that whole interview, he said from that point on, simple. You eliminate all the extra movements and just keep it basic. Square it up. A little bit of a take back. Makes things a lot easier. And if you go back to last year and if you looked at tape of Curtis, he was Quarter screwing himself, he used that term many times last year. His strikeouts are down. You know that he's got 70 strike. I'm not sorry. Well, he's got 116. I shouldn't say that. That's not true. Uh, but he's been a tougher out. Well, he's already hit as many home runs this year as he hit all of last year with 40 some games to go. He's walking more. Has a higher batting average. It's just it's all work for Curtis and. I think that you, you go back to April when he wasn't hitting much, but he was walking a whole bunch. <clears throat> he was able to keep his on base percentage high even when he wasn't hitting. Correct. And which, that kept his head above. Yes. Which he was fulfilling. That's drilled down the right field line, and that'll go all the way back to the wall. Lagaris digging for third. Polanco picking it up on the warning track, and Lagaris will slam on the brakes. It's a double for Granderson, and the Mets have second and third, and nobody out. Well, Curtis continues to roll. Hanging high slider, belt high. Ripped into the corner. Well played by Polanco. This good Lagaris can run. I don't know what he's waiting for. He should have been on his horse instantly. He might have scored. And he's, a, he's another toe tapper. Watch the front foot. Which I'm not a big fan of, but you know what? Whatever works. 22nd double of the year for Granderson. Mets had nine extra base hits yesterday. Two more already today. Cespedes has had the first. And that one Whoa. nearly goes to the backstop. A curveball that uh, befuddled Stewart. Clearly a cross up and he'll walk it back out to half. That's a helicopter, too. So Curtis has now reached base safely in 26 of the last. 28 way goes. So you can't ask for more. So the Mets down one nothing in the third. They've got the tying and lead runs in scoring position. Pirates have the infield back, of course. They'll concede a run on a ground ball. Cespedes has pulled a slider down the left field line for a double his first time up, and he swings and misses at the fastball one and one. Cespedes again, confused, a little bit peculiar. 186 coming into the game against left-handers. You wouldn't think that. Got the big power swing upstairs. We've seen teams attack him with high fastballs. A rebate to follow. And oh. a spike throw toward third. Lagaris, though, didn't realize it soon enough and has to stay put. He hit the bat? Did he not, or what? On the throw? Stewart trying to, trying to throw it behind Lagaris at third base. See exactly what happened. Got the bat. No, he just spiked it. I think the bat was in his way yeah. and he tried to hang on to it. Another high fastball gear where they've been pitching Cespedes upstairs. Yep, he spiked yeah, it. Yeah, he tried to hold it. I think that's exactly what happened. He, he was trying to stop the throw and it slipped out of his hand. One and two to Cespedes. And he foul tips it for strike three. Three straight fastballs up in the strike zone. That's the first out of the inning, the third strikeout for half, and an adventurous one at that. Wanted it in, but got it away. Foul tipped. There's that spike throw again. Whoop. 
He's lucky he didn't throw it in the dugout. He was quite an adventurous at bat. So now Rebe, one out, still second and third, and he pops it up. Mm. Neil Walker takes charge, and that's the second out. So the Mets at second and third and nobody out. Zespita strikes out. Rebe pops up the first pitch, and Hap has a chance to get through it. Well, he's still got he's not out of the not out of the woods yet. He's still got one more out to get. Well, this would be a big opportunity for the Mets to bypass. Murphy will try and avoid that with a two out hit which the Mets have become much more efficient at lately. Lagaris at third Granderson at second with two down. Murphy had a base hit to right center his first time up they're going to put a shift on against him. Leaving the shortstop hole open. I just don't you got to have to pitch him in then. I think they're setting up away. I just I don't understand. Murph can just Murph's got such good back control. We saw him do it in the series uh, in uh, with against Colorado. Such similar situation, and just hit a little ground ball right in that hole, first left side game, of the infield. First game of that series, he had the game-winning hit against yes. Boone Logan, doing exactly that. Also against the lefty. Yeah, they, Murphy they, fouls yeah. it off, and they adjusted the shift right before that pitch, and moved Gong over to the left side of the bat. And then they pitched him in, so they did everything the opposite. So you notice the pump, the the, the fist pump from the catcher Stewart, because Hap made a real good pitch inside. So I think they're trying defensively to move everybody around to kind of mess with Murph's mind, because Murph's always thinking, you know. Here's the 0-2, and Murphy fouls back the fastball. Remember Yogi Berra, who said you can't think ahead at the same time. Yogi. <laughs> you know what? Sometimes you can think too much. I know exactly what Yogi means. Not a bad player, was he? No. <laughs> and he could hit anything. Yes, he could. 0-2. And Murph strikes out on the slider, and Jay Happ gets himself out of big time trouble in the third. Mets at second and third, and nobody out, and they do not score. Your Mercedes Benz Tri State dealers visit them on the web at searchmercedes.com. Andrew McCutcheon leads off the fourth inning with the Pirates up 1 0. 
Malone struck him out his first time up. And he bounces the slider for ball one. McCutcheon hitting 393 with runners in scoring position this year. 421 with two outs. That's incredible. Here with the bases empty, pulls one foul. McCutcheon has been hot since the early part of May, but since August 1st, even hotter. Presented by DraftKings, play daily fantasy baseball for free on DraftKings.com at our promo code NYM for free entry. McCutcheon this year played in his fifth All Star game and hit an All Star game home run against Chris Archer. Ramos Ramirez on deck. McCutcheon won the MVP two years ago, but perhaps even more impressively, he's been in the top three in the MVP balloting three straight years. Gives you an idea just what level he has been playing at. Well, he's one of the big reasons why the Pirates have turned things around. And you'd have to think that if he voted today, he'd be in the top three again. Sure. Hey, Harper and Goldschmidt. Anytime you're in the top five, you're up there in the stratosphere. Ionosphere. It's a, a better year this year than those MVP numbers two years ago. 2 2 coming off the plate and a full count to McCutcheon. Cologne, by the way, has walked a batter in 29 and a third innings. But if you're ever going to walk anybody, this will probably be the guy. First three ball count of the night for Cologne. And he does walk him. So that ends that string. Cologne has gone four straight starts without a walk. So that's his 15th walk of the year, folks. And his 10th unintentional walk. He averages 0.9 walks per nine innings. Easily the yes. best control figure in the league. He's good. He had a streak in April and May where he went seven starts without a walk. So it's a leadoff base runner for the Pirates, and now Ramirez, who grounded out to third base his first time up. McCutcheon has had 33 stole, uh, stolen bases, a career high. That was back in 2010. Only six this year. He's been nursing a sore knee a good part of the year. And the slider outside of Ramirez. He's got a. There you go. That pretty much. Those are some pretty impressive names right behind him. Yes. Scherzer, Baumgartner, Zimmerman, Granke. I think the ground's not far behind that either. 149 stolen bases for McCutcheon. But like a lot of players, when they get a little bit older, they, their stolen bases diminish. <laughs> Unlike Ricky Henderson, Lou Brock, Maury Wills, uh, McCutcheon last year was the first year he didn't steal over 20 bases. He stole 18. That's the second time in two days we've had a 28 year old referred to as an older player. Well, yeah, I agree. <laughs> I mean, Lou broke Ty Cobb's record, uh, single season record in his mid 30s. 33, wasn't yeah, he? 30. Something like that. Yeah. Well, he does so many other things well and plays every day. There's no reason for him to do the damage to his body that stolen bases tend to do. You know, what you can do is wait and you get your stolen bases at the right time, and then when it comes stretch run time, that's when you can turn it on. The last month of the season, six weeks. Start dialing it up a little bit. Of course, it also depends what kind of team you have. I mean, the Pirates have not been a big home run hitting team this year, but all of a sudden, recently, they've begun to hit for more power. Well, Al Al Alvarez has been hot. Ramirez skies one to left center. And Cespedes is there. One out. Later tonight, check out MetsBlog.com for WB Mason postgame extra, an exclusive online postgame show featuring more reaction from tonight's Mets Pirate game and additional analysis from Keith. Expert analysis always. Oh, okay. On Mets Blog, presented by City, part of the SNY.TV blog network. I mean, we do that every day, that WB Mason postgame extra. It's important people go online and see it because I know you work hard on that every day to make it special. Well, Here's Jung Ho Gong. Try with one out and one on. Gong hitting three uh, 352 clip. 
since the All-Star break. That's 24 games. That's a month's worth of work. Good work. It is a very crowded rookie field in the National League this year. First Bryant, Jock Peterson, Yosemite Tomas, Noah Syndergaard, Gong is certainly in that conversation as well. There was a lot of talk about Gong when he first came over here because of the big leg kick that he has, whether he'd be able to deal with major league fastball. And it appears he's answered those questions. I do remember Daryl Strawberry having a leg kick. He did okay. He doesn't have that big a. Daryl had a much bigger leg kick. Gong has uh, he's refined it a little bit, and he's been advised by his coaching staff to not use it when he has two strikes. But I think it depends on the pitcher. He's not using it as much in certain situations. It's hard to make major uh, adjustments to hitters. You know they've hit that way their whole life. I agree with two strikes. You've got to be more compact. He's very crouched in his stance. He's ready to hit. And no late kick at all there. And he takes outside one and two. Now Gong is the first player to come out of the Korean baseball organization to the big leagues. There have been other Korean position players who've been signed as teenagers, like uh, Isab Choi and Shinsu Chu, but. Dong is the first to come out of the KBO into the big leagues as a position player. So there's a lot of mystery about him. And that's why he didn't get a particularly big contract. He signed a four year eleven million dollar deal which by the standards of a lot of these international deals is is a huge bargain for the Pirates. Would you take eleven million. Rusty Castillo got seventy five million. Well and Gong's been way more productive. Three and two now to Gong. By the way, speaking of Castillo and the Red Sox, I want to send out all our best to John Farrell. Yes. Red Sox manager. Shocking revelation today that he has stage one lymphoma and he's going to take the rest of the season off. John, I played with my last year in Cleveland. He was part of that starting rotation on the Indians. And what a wonderful guy. Very solid, straight guy. Who loved him. Red Sox will be here in a couple of weeks. There goes the runner and Gong fouls it off. So the cutchin was on his way. Well, why not? Three and two. You know, a lot of guys, folks, I don't want you to think that I'm just saying nice things about John Farrell. I really mean that. John was a, was a wonderful person, solid guy. Um, he was one of my favorites on that staff, uh, which was uh, John Candiotti, uh, Bud Black was on that staff. And John Farrell, they were the big three, and John was just a sweetheart. I loved him, and I was on my last leg, and he knew it. And he was, uh, he was, just, he was, he treated me great. It was, it was, it was a nice. He made my stay as nice as it could be in Cleveland. Cutch and runs. Gong pops this one up. Kadir hoping for a play, but well beyond his reach. And when I say my stay in, in Cleveland, I'm not disparaging Cleveland. I was on my last leg. I wasn't performing. It wasn't any fun. It was the first year where I knew I was finished, and I said, "Oh my gosh, I've got a two-year contract, and I can't play anymore." You know what? You can say that about Cleveland because when you were there, and they were in the old mistake by the lake, it was no fun for anybody to play there. It was uh, very cold in April. Let's put it that way. Once they built the new ballpark, now known as Progressive Field, it became a lot more yeah. enticing place to play. Did a nice hair show in the summer. That's, it. That's one good thing. Eighth pitch of the bat coming to Gong. McCutcheon runs again, and Gong flares one. Shallow right center. On comes Granderson. He'll have to play it on the hop. McCutcheon nice. read it well. He'll go to third. Beautiful base running. He does one thing here. He thinks it's going to drop, Gare, and we'll see it. This is a little bloop. He's on his horse. He picks the ball up. He, he makes the turn, but he realizes, hey, I can't get back to first. I might as well go. What's the set? I just I just might as well go but I'm already too far exposed. The biggest problem he had was making sure he touched second base. Took his eye off the base to make sure he knew where the ball was. So Gong on the eighth pitch of the bat winds up with the third hit for the Pirates and they got first and third and one out for Pedro Alvarez. Well they struck him out with all the change ups away Gare. Flat first time up.
Alvarez cues one foul and Kutchin had to jump out of the way. Take a look at Gong's swing hands high. With the bat barrel going forward. And he, just, he got beat there. That's why he let go with one hand. He was beat inside. So it was a very uh, fortuitous. Thank his lucky stars on that hit. Well, the Mets bypassed a golden scoring chance in the last half inning. Cologne trying to keep the Pirates off the board. Already down one nothing. Mm. And that just missed somehow one and one. Cologne wanted that call. That's how far off the plate Alvarez is standing, I gather. Doesn't look like he's that far off the plate. No, he's actually close. Sinkle away, two and one. I remember one year, Bert Hooten, uh, Messersmith came to the Dodgers. He taught Bert Hooten how to throw the change up. And Bert got me out in, in uh, I forget, it was the Cardinals. Got me out in St. Louis with it. And I remember I went to L.A. right after, what we always did. First at bat, he got me out with the change up again. I said, okay, it's a good one. I'm he's gonna throw it to me again if I get I'm gonna save this hopefully late in the game where I can hurt him with an RBI. And lo and behold, in my last at bat, I had a, a tie ball game, sacrifice fly situation. I went down one of the rare times I went down my pinky on the knob to get a longer bat and I moved two inches closer to the plate where the catcher couldn't pick that up. And sure enough, he threw it to me. I got a line drive right at the right fielder and won the ball game. Alvarez, it's a comebacker. Cologne to second for one. Flores on the first. Double play. Saad retired. A 3 1 sinker, and he got exactly what he needed. The 42 year old master carves a 1 6 3 to get out of a jam. Tries to keep his great role going against the sinker baller Charlie Morton tomorrow. Matt Harvey Sunday against the lefty Jeff Locke before the Mets head to Baltimore. Kadire grounds one to short. Gong throws him out. One pitch and one out for Jay Happ in the fourth. Happ had himself a, a happening in the third. Gave up a single and a double. Almost threw into the backstop against Cespedes. He had his catcher spike a throw to third, but 
struck out Cespedes got a rebound to pop up and Murphy struck out and he was able to extricate himself from big time trouble and retain a one nothing lead. Now Flores who had a base hit in the second he left the right side of the infield wide open for him and Flores hit it through a little different look on the defense this time for the Pirates. And the back to occur for a strike. So they've got that hole closed down a little bit on the right side. Oh, pick, pick up the bat, Wilmer. You need that. I've never seen that. Well, this outing for Jay Happ. So far, it looks a lot like the one that Chris Russin turned in for Colorado the other night. As he strikes out Flores, his fifth strikeout. Russin, another left hander who gave up tons of base runners, but didn't give up a run until the sixth inning. As he was locked in a scoreless duel with Matt Harvey. Here, Happ has had considerable traffic, but been able to work around it. And now we'll face Anthony Wrecker with two out and nobody on. Wrecker walked his first time up. And Anthony pops it up. Walker waiting for it to come down. Six pitch inning for Jay Happ. He retires the Mets one, two, three. After four at City Field, one up in Pirates. Inning home run has stood up. Both Jay Happ and Bartolo Colon have worked out of tough jams. We've been following the progress of John Neese's week all week with Steve Gelbs, and Steve has the final installment. Steve? Yeah, sad day, Gary. Final installment in this uh, episode of following John Neese's day to day life. But today, it's, it's a very, very light day for John Neese, as you would assume, going into his start tomorrow. Does not do much work in terms of physical activity. He'll go out, he'll stretch with the pitchers, he'll throw a little bit from 90 feet, but that's pretty much it physically. Mentally, though, he really starts to kick things into gear today. About an hour before the game, sits for about a half hour, maybe a little bit more, looking through video of the next day's batters. He does it on his iPad. He looks at the way that these hitters are generally going against lefties. He also, if he's faced the guy before, will look at video of himself against that particular hitter, trying to pick up trends in terms of swings, pitch sequence, things like that. And then a day like today when he's not the starter for the first game of the series, 
He'll sit here and he will watch these hitters up close and personal. He says that he tries to pinpoint certain things that really get them off kilter. If he finds something with a hitter, he'll go over today with Travis Darno sitting on the bench right next to him and he'll tell him, hey, listen, try and remember that for tomorrow. That's how we're going to go after him at least to start. It's an interesting process, right? Because being the only left hander in the rotation right now, it makes it a little bit different for John watching. The guys working before him against a particular team. Two and two to Ishikawa. But it's interesting, Steve, how he progresses from the physical of the week to the more mental approach of today. Yeah, that's the real key to this entire process for John Neese as Ishikawa strikes out looking. Um, and we've talked about this throughout the week, how his health this year has been such a vital part of his success and he seems to have figured that part out mentally it goes even into tomorrow he said and this this part's kind of interesting and, and goes more towards superstition as well but before he starts the day of starts before he can do anything else when he gets to the clubhouse he says he has to sit there on his phone and play solitaire <laughs> and he has to get a thousand points on solitaire which usually takes 10 to 12 times through the games said it's a trend that he started 69 starts ago he knows because he has 69,000 points but the point of that for him he said it's not just to get away from the game but it's also to sharpen himself mentally for the start ahead makes sense after all alone among players that pitcher is the solitary figure Chris Stewart had a base hit his first time up Alone behind him 2 0. And now 3 0 with the pitcher half on deck. Well, it's been fascinating all week to hear about Nice's progression from start to start. And we'll see the payoff tomorrow night when he faces the Pirates in the second game of this series. Here's strike three and one to Stewart. Cologne not only walked a batter in the fourth inning, three of the four hitters he faced, he ran a three ball count, and now another one. So that's three ball counts to four of the last six hitters. And there's a strike three and two. Three, two. Right back to Cologne, but it skids on by, but Murph's there to clean up and makes the play for the second out. Went right through the wickets on Cologne, but he had the backup. That's a play he almost always makes because he is such a terrific fielder of his position and always in perfect fielding position. And Murph had showed some nice range over there. I mean, you love the way Cologne comes out of his delivery, and he is square to the plate, right. ready to be a fifth infield. He stabbed at it, and that's one of those balls that comes back to the pitcher. You think it's hit harder than it is. Jay Hop tried to bunt and took a call third strike his first time up. And half a hack. Counts the full one. It's one on one. Alone who didn't strike out or walk a batter in his last start against Tampa Bay. One walk, five strikeouts tonight. Pirates always had in their helmets, if you remember, Gary, kind of like that. It's not a real shiny, it's kind of a, a mat on their helmet. Mm -hmm. One, two. He did not swing. With a half swing, and this time gets another chance. I mean, if something looks as ugly as this, and just should have been called a strike <laughs> on general principles. There's the helmet right there. I always, even when I was a kid, they never had the real shiny helmets. Steel Town. That's right. Or it was. 2 2 pitch. Got him looking, side retire. Six strikeouts for Cologne. Through the first five innings. We're halfway through at City Field, one nothing Pirates.
looks at the current state of the Jets as they prepare to start the season without Geno Smith. Plus, here from Marcus Gilchrist and Buster Screen, why these new additions may hold the keys to the secondary's success on Jets Nation inside camp Sunday at 7, only on SNY. I need to work on the offensive side of the ball. Oh boy, 128 yards total offense. Mm. Bartolo Colon leads off in the home fifth against Jay Happ, taking all the way for a strike. Do you remember the uh, number one draft pick for the Kansas City Chiefs in the AFL, Cookie Gilchrist? Remember those days? Back in the oh, early 60s. Yes. He played for Buffalo, didn't he? Yes, but I think that, I, maybe I'm wrong. I thought the Chiefs drafted him. He was a big number one pick. That was stolen from the NFL back when they were di divided leagues. Cologne down on three pitches and uh, takes a few tentative strides toward first before he accepts the tag. First out. So one out tonight's cold hard facts brought to you by Clean Crisp Coors Light. And since May 21st, when the uh, Pirates engaged the Mets last. They've got the best record in baseball on the team they're chasing. The Cardinals have the second best. Blue Jays with their two 11 game winning streaks right there with them. There's Clint Hurdle. Saw Kansas City on that list, and the Royals have the largest lead of any team. They've got an 11 game lead in the AL Central as Ligaris takes inside. But the last two nights, Kansas City lost games where they blew leads and after the seventh inning. That hadn't happened in over a hundred right. games. Exactly. And it happened two nights in a row. Right. Harris flies one foul. And last night they lost a game they led in the ninth inning, which hadn't happened since early last season. And they lost to the Angels. Over had, had a, what a nine game losing streak on the road. They snapped something like that. So it was a, those are big wins for the Angels. Angels a game and a half behind Houston in that AL West. One on one to Ligaris is one for two. Hap runs that slider in on him, one and two. Jay Hap making his second start for the Pirates is going a lot better than the first one. Strike three call. Mm. Hap is thrown well. Lagares looking for something else takes the fastball for Hap's seventh strike out of the night. I don't think he was looking, Gary. I think it was just, you know what? I, you know me. I that fastball inside corner with two strikes when a hitter's up there protecting. You're going to be vulnerable inside. Just a good pitch. By the way, you were right. Cookie Gilchrist did, was the Buffalo Bills. Not that that's just miscellaneous. Yeah, he was one of the big stars of the AFL in the early days. Yes, he was. Here's Granderson. Hap runs that fastball inside. Granderson doubled down the right field line in the third. One for two on the day. Mets at second and third. Nobody out in that third inning. Since then, eight Mets in a row have been retired. And the mm. curveball from Hap for a strike, and it's one and one. So he's had it all working tonight. He's doing. He's throwing predominantly fastballs, and he's locating. One and two to Granderson. And all the Yankees and Jays who played in New York last week now playing up north of the border. And the Blue Jays who were seven games behind two weeks ago now with a half game lead in that AL East. David Price on the mound tonight. Granderson hits one out to center field. McCutcheon is right there. And that retires the side. That's the first outfield put out behind Jay Happ tonight. Five of the books, one nothing Pirates.
And that has been all the scoring tonight. Bartolo Colon and Jay Happ back of the rotation starters doing the job tonight. Third time around the batting order for Cologne as Gregory Polanco leads off and drags a bunt. Cologne like a cat off the mound. The submarine throw and Ooh. bobbled by Kadire and Polanco is safe. Well, I tell you what, he would have made the play if, the, if it was a clean pick. And it was a tough pick for Kadire. But he beats him to the bag. Just that would have been an out. Tough, tough, tough uh, pickup for Kadire. Scored a base hit for Polanco. Just the fourth hit. And now Cologne, who controls the running game well, has to be wary of Polanco running. So here's Walker, who hit the first pitch he saw tonight over the fence in right center for his 12th home run of the year. The comebacker his second time up. Polanco, 20 stolen bases this year. Second on the Pirates is Starling Marte, who's out of the lineup tonight with a hand injury. And seventh in the National League. And Walker grounds one down to first. The step and fire by Kadire for the tag play. And Polanco's out. Double play. Beautifully handled by Kadire and Flores for the 3 3 6 double play. Nice play by Kadire. Easy hop, doesn't rush. And there you go. Throw it inside the bag. Blanco's of the feeling that the throw is a force out. His back is to the play. I think uh, it's, it, you have time to look back there. But either way you look at it, I think it's two. That's that's a really interesting thing because if you're the runner at first base, you can't have any idea whether Kadire stepped on first base. Exactly. Can you? Exactly. Because if he goes to the other side of the bag, he probably. Or at least he has a chance to be safe instead of going in to Flores. He had to throw it inside. It wouldn't have mattered. He would have been out anyway. Wilmer got clobbered on the slide. Very clean slide. There's McCutcheon who struck out and walked tonight. And Cologne falls behind him 2 0. You don't have to say you're sorry. That's clean. There's nothing wrong with that play. I'm sorry, did I hurt you? Umpire David Rackley right on top of the play to make the call. This is what Bartolo has had against the right handers. It's made him so effective tonight, Gary. That last pitch, he's throwing a really, really good sinker down and in on the hands of the right hand hitters. And if he misses, he misses inside. He's been very effective with that pitch. There it is again. And he walks McCutcheon on four pitches. Second time in a row he's walked McCutcheon. The only two batters he's walked tonight. And you can certainly understand why he would pitch carefully to the former MVP. Well, I think Bartolo Colon, the veteran that he is, looked over that lineup and said that McCutcheon is not going to beat him. So he'll face Aramis Ramirez instead. Ramirez tonight is grounded out and flying out over two. Ramirez first pitch swing flies one out to Lagaris. Can of corn side retire. Cologne continues to pitch well. That's down one nothing in the sixth. Delmont.
Thanks, Courtney, and welcome to the SNY family. Yeah. That's a part of the batting order up in the home sixth inning down one nothing. Joanna Cespedes takes the backdoor slider outside. Cespedes doubled down the left field line in the first, struck out in the third. Jay Happ had a lot of traffic to deal with early, but now he's retired nine in a row in his second start for the Pirates. And he falls behind Cespedes 2 0 with the Rebay and Murphy to follow. Huge crowd gathered at City Field tonight. Hoping the Mets can keep the good times rolling. 11 of their last 13 they've won. Cespedes mm. with that huge cut, and it's 2 and 1. Well, he doesn't get cheated. But they're beating them with fastballs, belting up. We saw him swing like that in the home run derby two years ago and hit some in the upper deck in left field. So it's not that easy. 19 home runs for the year for Cespedes. And that catches the inside corner. Two and two. The half is throwing inside too. So this, let this be a lesson to a lot of pitchers on any level. Boy, if you establish inside. Tap acquired from the Mariners at the trading deadline was really not pitching well for Seattle. And did not pitch well in his first start for the Pirates. Lasted just four and a third, gave up four runs against the Cubs. And remember, we're getting into the sixth inning here where we've got a very, very, very top notch Pirate bullpen. And getting into the back end of that bullpen where they are very uh, uh, successful, if they have a lead. They fortified that bullpen, picking up Joaquin Soria at the trading deadline to go with. Tony Watson and Mark Melanson at the end of game. Cespedes drives one deep left center field. That goes Ishikawa near the wall. It's out of here. Cespedes ties the game with his 20th home run of the year. Second home run as a Met. They've come in the last three days. And this is a huge one to get the Mets on the board and tied in one. Another fastball here. Wanted it in, didn't got it in, but guess what? A little bit below the belt. And he made a little adjustment too. Not sure he even got all of that. He got under it, and that's how strong he is. Now Ribe, and he first pitch swings and drives one foul. Half the 14th home run he's given up this year. Powerful swing. Not much of a stride. And it's a home run swing. He's not. He's not looking to get a double. Rebe gets under one. This will be playable for Ishikawa. He just missed that one, got under it. So one out of the inning. Home run for Uena Cespedes means $2,000 for Mets community partner, the City Community Home Runs Program. Cespedes' home run is the 67th that the Mets have hit at City Field this year. That equals the most home runs the Mets have ever hit in a season at City Field. Of course, they moved the fences in a little bit this year. Mets have now hit 106 home runs overall. Here's Murphy, who's one for two. And he drives one down the right field line, and he's got himself an extra base hit. Murphy pulls in at second with his second hit of the night, a one out double. And with that, he ties Howard Johnson for fourth on the Mets' all-time doubles list. Congratulations. Hanging breaking ball. Murph stays in. Watch him stay in in the hangar, and then you just pull the trigger. Boom. Nicely done. There it is. Ripped. And with that, the Pirates are going to get their bullpen going. And in fact, not only going, but in the game. Clint Hurdle's on his way out, and he's going to pull half right now. Well, I think he's got enough out of him. Well, half went five innings without allowing a run. He gives up a home run and a double. 
here in the sixth, and he's out after five and a third in a 1 1 game. Oh boy. Jared Hughes coming in. The call to the bullpen brought to you by Verizon. Michael Kadir up against the new Pirate pitcher Jared Hughes and he takes a fastball for a strike. Well Hughes in 56 games having himself a nice year. However he's been scored upon the last three of his last five outings after yeah. uh, 21 straight games without giving up a run. He had a great year last year his whip is considerably higher this year than last. Go ahead run at second and Murphy almost was caught leaning. Hughes held on to it an extra beat, otherwise he might have had it. A very uh, peculiar sense of humor. He would have had him if he got rid of the ball. All in one to Kadir, and he fouls one off his leg. So Jay Happ leaves after five and a third. He allowed seven hits, one walk, seven strikeouts. Can't win it, could lose it. Wilmer Flores on deck. That's made a killing against the Rockies bullpen in the four game series just concluded. This is a very different animal they're facing in this Pirates bullpen. Being a little more circumspect about his lead. With Walker keeping an eye on him. The Dyer grounds one. Murph will have to hold. Gone with the long throw against Kadir for the second out. So two out of the inning. Now Flores is one for two tonight. Wilmer has single and struck out. Remember now, Wilmer likes that ball down middle end. And that's I think Ray Surge is going to go have a little chat with his pitcher. Is that Wilmer's you can look at all Wilmer's 11 home runs and they're all a pitch middle of the plate in down in the strike zone. What do you have going on here. You have a sinker ball right hand pitcher Gary. He's going to throw that sinker into his zone. I think Ray Surge is saying hey you cannot leave this over the middle. If you're throwing that sinker you got to miss. You miss you miss inside. You got to hit the corners here or he'll lose. One. How about this. You got first base open, and Anthony Recker, who hasn't had a big league hit in two and a half months, is on deck. Why don't you just walk for it? Well, that might be part of the conversation too. You know, it's pitch. You know, pitch this guy. Be precise. If you fall before, if you fall behind, this is where you'd like your three catchers. You know, on the you have two catchers on the bench because you can make a move. 
Murphy the go ahead run at second with two out after Cespedes has tied the game with a home run. Well, we'll see how carefully they pitch to Flores here with Wrecker on deck. Fastball, nothing in one. Rumor taking all the way there, just. Bobby Parnell getting ready in the Mets bullpen in case the Mets want to bat for Cologne in the center. Now Flores bloops one behind first, and Alvarez is there to snag it. Side retired, but the Mets get even. Yuan assess, but it's his second home run as a Met and his 20th home run of the year. They pitch him inside, he clouts one. And we're tied 1 1 as we go to the seventh at City Field. And Hap each has given up just a solo home run tonight. Hap is out. Cologne is still in. As we start the seventh, Jung Ho Gong leads off for the Pirates. And he takes a strike. And we check in with Steve Gelb, whose report tonight is brought to you by StubHub. Steve? Gary, Clint Hurdle was talking a lot about Gong before the game today. And this kind of goes to what you guys were talking about earlier in the game with that big leg kick that then basically goes by the wayside after uh, the two strike count. Gong grounds out right there. But. With Jungle Gong, one of the things that has most impressed Hurdle is how he sticks to a core philosophy. And that core philosophy is that this guy goes up there and he guesses. He hunts for his pitch. And when he gets his pitch, he really doesn't miss it. But that's the key with Gong is that when he hunts those pitches, it's only before it goes to two strikes. He severely changes his approach when it gets to two strikes, as we've seen with the leg kick and with the shortening of the swing, shortening of the swing, showing the maturity that a guy who's a rookie probably doesn't show but for Gong who's almost 30 as a rookie he has the capabilities to do so. Right you wouldn't uh, it's a uh, very good point right there Steve you wouldn't want a 20 year old kid or uh, be going up there and looking for breaking balls on his rookie season. Pedro Alvarez takes low and in 93 from Cologne in the seventh inning. Well he's uh Stepping it up here, is he not? Pitching against a very good ball game against a good ball club. It's a warm but not overly hot night. The hotter weather's coming the next couple of days. Is it going to be humid? Should be. Oh, okay. Summer weather. Alvarez takes one the other way past Uribe. An opposite field hit with the Mets playing the shift against Alvarez. And the Pirates have their fifth hit against Cologne. Well, it took Alvarez. 
three at bats to finally decide to go the other way. The second at bat number he came up with runners on. First and third with one out in the double play. It's an old one out base runner and Travis Ishikawa with the batter. Eric O'Flaherty getting ready in the Mets bullpen. Interesting call because the Met, the uh, Pirates do not have a left handed bat on their bench. Ishikawa has lined out and struck out 0 for 2. Chris Stewart is the on deck batter, a right hand hitter, then the pitcher spot. They've got four right hand hitters and a switch hitter, Pedro Florimon, on the bench. And now two and oh. Ishikawa, who grew up in the Seattle area. Started out his career as a Giants draft pick. He's bounced around a lot the last few years. Played the game for the Yankees. One game two years ago. Started last year with the Pirates. Wound up back with the Giants. And then when the Giants waived him last month, the Pirates took him back. Alone behind 2 0, and Ishikawa pops it up. Playable for a rebate. And trip over the bag. Two out. Alone falls behind on the count, but gets a big out. Now there are two out of the inning. Your Mets power pitchers of the week brought to you by East Coast Power and Gas. And the Mets second in the major leagues in ERA and even better of late. Pirates third on that list. Stewart, who singled the center and grounded out to second, one for two. And he takes a strike. Michael Morris is out on deck. Morris, you'll remember, started out the year with the Marlins and then got traded in the deadline deal to the Dodgers so that they could acquire Matt Latos, and the Dodgers DFA'd him, and the Pirates picked him up. Flared foul. It's interesting that the Pirates would end up with both Ishikawa and Morris, both of whom were postseason heroes with the Giants last year, and now both reunited with the Pirates. Morris, of course, started in Miami. Boy, what a thought Miami made a lot of nice moves, but boy, the injuries and they just having a terrible season. So Antonio Bastard of the lefty, Joaquin Soria, the right hander up in the Pirates bullpen. 0 oh 2 to Chris Stewart. Struck him out. Number seven for Bartolo Colon. Seven terrific innings from Big Bart. 1 1 game.
good friend Jay Horowitz today is celebrating his 70th birthday. Jay, of course, is the vice president of media relations for the Mets, and we didn't want the day to pass without uh, commemoration of this major day in Jay's life, and so we sent Keith out to make a special delivery. Well, I've known Jay for how long? Jay was the guy that forgot to, that couldn't find me in Montreal when he was supposed to pick me up when I was traded and meet the team. Seventieth <laughs> okay. birthday! Congratulations, Jay. Did you get a slice? Yes, I did. He didn't oh, show it. Oh, Jay. oh Jay got a slice. Look, he didn't get on his face. It's unusual. Happy birthday, Jay. There's nobody better. You got it, Jay. Half his life working for the Mets. Anthony Recker leads off in the home seventh against Jared Hughes and takes a strike. New left fielder for the Pirates, Sean Rodriguez, better defensive outfielder. In for Travis Ishikawa. Kelly Johnson out on deck for the Mets to bat for Cologne, who turned in seven terrific innings tonight. Now the Mets will see if they can get him a run and a chance for a win. Eight times in Cologne's first 22 starts, the Mets scored either no runs or one run, and he lost seven of those eight games with a no decision. They have just one run tonight. Ball to strike to record. Hughes did a nice job. Came out of the sixth after Murphy's double knocked Jay Happ out, and he got Gadire in a ground out and Flores on a pop up to keep the game tied. And record takes a big cut. Good sinker by Hughes, one and two. Anthony tried to snap a long over. Mentioned earlier, it's been since June the 5th since his last big league hit. He's had a couple of trips to the minor leagues over that span of time. Well, he's got a lot of power in that bat when he makes contact. Mm. And Hughes strikes him out to start the bottom of the seventh. He's got a pretty good sinker. So one out and nobody on. Now Kelly Johnson, who had a huge day yesterday, will pinch in. Kelly yesterday afternoon against the Rockies, two doubles and a home run, drove in three runs. Broke a 0 for 12, did he not? He did emphatically. Kelly is one for ten as a pinch hitter this season. Lagaris waits on deck. And Johnson pulls one right into the shift. Walker down to a knee, throws him out, two away. Let's check out our Verizon trivia question for tonight. The only three players who have 300 or more hits for both the Mets and the Pirates. All right, I got one. I got two. I got a first baseman and a shortstop. I know the shortstop now, and I know the first baseman. Wasn't the shortstop a first round pick? No. Oh, it could have been him. Okay, I was thinking of somebody else. Oh, another short. Might be two shortstops. Only one. Tyler Clippert up in the Mets bullpen, getting ready for the eighth inning. Garris takes a strike one and one. Juan is one for three tonight. Had a base hit back in the third against Jay Happ, who acquitted himself quite nicely in his second start for the Pirates. Happ went five and a third, allowed one run, seven hits, a walk, seven strikeouts. Slowly hit, cut off nicely by Ramirez, and he throws him out. Ramos Ramirez, looking ten years younger than his 37 years old. Very nice ranging to his left on the line. That's why he had to go and reach. Once you get there, you do that little spinorama, as Gary likes to call it. Easy.
you by Tri Honda. Hurry to your local Tri Honda dealer for great deals on the 2015 models. By StubHub, the official fan to fan ticket marketplace of the New York Mets. And by State Farm, today's State Farm agent of the game is Brian Levitt of Park Slope. Contact Brian at WeInsureNewYork.com. Eighth inning at City Field, and Tyler Clifford will make his ninth appearance as a Met. Well, he's been outstanding anywhere, in any uniform, it doesn't matter. So far with the Mets, eight appearances, only one run and seven and two thirds. That was the home run. Solo home run. He wanted him getting a win in that game. Michael Morris will be the pinch hitter, batting for Jared Hughes, who retired all five batters he faced. Morris is three for ten since joining the Pirates, hitting just 218 for the season. And Morris takes outside and low for ball one. So another strong performance by Bartolo Colon results in a no decision. Alone seven innings, one run, five hits, two walks, seven strikeouts, 95 pitches. And now it's in the hands of the bullpens. Polanco on deck and then Walker for the Pirates. And if anybody gets on, Andrew McCutcheon would get a turn at bat here in the eighth. Clippert behind on Morris, 2 0. And he fouls the fastball away. Well, the Pirates trail the Cardinals, but they're on top in the wild card with the Cubs winning this afternoon. By the way, the Cubs have won 14 of their last 15 now. They've got the one game lead on the Cubs and a fairly substantial lead over everybody else in that wild card. Well, it's quite apparent where the best division in the National League is. Well, the top three teams in that division are. Looking like they're all going to go to the postseason. Those are the teams with the three best records in the National League right now: Cardinals, Pirates, right. and Cubs. It's a long way to go, but thus it's incumbent on the Mets to win the division. Division or bust, and send the Nationals home packing. Well, they've got 47 games, including tonight, to do that. Morris takes a changeup high, three and two. Mets have six more games with the Nationals. Including the final three games of the year. Correct. And we'll find out if they'll mean anything at that point. That'll be very interesting. Got a lot of territory to cover between now and then. That's why they play the games. 3 2. And that's low ball four. So Clipper loses Morris to a leadoff walk. Let's check in with the studio. Courtney Fallon has another game break brought to you by Ford. Inspirational performance for the Bosox tonight with the uh, really awful news about their manager, John Farrell. So Clipper puts himself in an early spot. Lead off walk to Morris. No pinch runner. Morris with bad wheels at first base will stay there as Gregory Polanco takes the turn at bat. Polanco had a bunt singles last time up, one for three. And no hint of a bunt here. He takes a strike. Ribe in on the grass at third to make sure. Polanco's had just one career at bat against Clippert, 0 for 1. Neil Walker on deck, Andrew McCutcheon behind him. Fouls back to fastball, nothing at two. Sunday and an all new Mets insider, former Mets making a name for themselves, coaching the game they love, get an inside look at their journey to the top and how they're making a difference both on and off the field on Mets Insider, presented by WB Mason Sunday at 4 30, only on SNY. Should be a nice show. We're talking about Tim Tuffle and Wally Backman and Edgardo Alfonso and Frank Viola, among others. Polanco in an 0 2 hole.
And Clipper pops one inside, one and two. Good pitch, 0 oh and 2. Now he can, do, he can double up or inside or throw the combio. The signature change. One two coming. Change up struck him out. Leopard registers his first down as he gets Polanco. You got to be careful with a hitter like Walker coming up. Here's the circle change. He's put away a few hitters over his career. You got a line drive hitter in Walker who's a guy that uses both gaps. So good off speed hitter. Really got to be careful here. And he's had some success against Clipper three for seven in his career and he's responsible for the only pirate run tonight with a first inning home run. And Walker pops one foul. Nothing in one. First inning. First pitch fastball down the middle a little below the belt. And that's the only run Bartolo gave up tonight. Stayed one nothing Pirates still the sixth when you in a Cespedes homeward to get the Mets even. And now with both starters gone, Clippard trying to hold the fort here in the eighth. Walker grounded into a double play his last time up, a ground ball to Kadire at first. And he takes the fastball up and away, one and one. Andrew McCutcheon looming on deck, so this is an enormous hitter for Clippard. You don't want to face him with a runner in scoring position. Keith gave you the numbers earlier on McCutcheon. 393 with runners in scoring position this year. So we'd like to avoid that at all costs. Morris at first and one out. And Walker takes the fastball just inside. Two and one. Home run in the first inning was his 12th of the year. They've all come as a left hand batter. And he pops this one up into shallow left. Cespedes is there. Two out. Well, he catches everything casually, doesn't he? He does. He's caught him all so far. He or knocked he one on a transfer. On a transfer, yes. Could have been ruled a no catch. So two out in McCutcheon and how do you pitch McCutcheon in this situation in a 1 1 game with the go ahead run to first. Well you certainly don't want. To give him a free pass here you got to go after him because you got the veteran in the on deck circle and Aramis Ramirez and he's been a guy that's driven in 1300 plus in his career. Cologne pitched around McCutcheon twice both times with the bases empty. McCutcheon has done well against Clipper four for ten with a home run. Go ahead run at first and two out. Curves in the dirt. Knocked down by Wrecker 1 0. Well, if, if you throw a wild pitch, that makes the decision easy. And of course you would walk. What? Well, it's a tough to, it would be a tough decision for Terry to make. I'll tell you what. They the want way, him to throw over. The way Ramirez has been swinging and the way McCutcheon has been swinging. I don't think you can throw a strike to McCutcheon in this spot. McCutcheon burned the Mets in that first series when the Pirates swept the Mets in May, went six for ten with two home runs. Cologne struck him out on three pitches. He was a real odd at bat in the first inning with a couple of check swing foul balls. And then he walked him twice after that. Ramirez is four for nine against Clippert here with a home run. Pick your poison, right? All speed pitch fouled off one and one. Left handers, two of them up in the bullpen. Bastardo on the left, Watson on the right. Watson 
generally pitches with a lead in the eighth inning. He's a crossover guy, and then they have Mark Melanson who pitches the ninth. One and one to McCutcheon. Hmm. And a fastball strike. Terrific pitch by Clifford. One and two. Caught him looking for a change up. Pop the fastball. I like Clifford. I like what I see. He's 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 fearless. You gotta beat him. Well, this is the biggest moment of his brief Mets career so far. Facing one of the best hitters in the game. One two. Curveball just missed. Good eye. Two and two. Interesting. Deep breathing is such a good thing when you're uh, performing and you watch when Clifford takes his stretch. He takes a deep breath when he comes to the belt. Thirty-eight thousand plus on hand tonight. Off full count. That ball wanted it. Wrecker wanted it up and in, and he missed badly on the outside. You saw him make his motion with Clippert make a motion with his hand. It came underneath. So now it's three and two. Morris will be on his way. Kadir is going to continue to hold against him. Not sure why. Really? There's no runner. Again, doesn't run well. Got to get behind him, don't you? Record calls for the changeup. Struck him out. Signature pitch, signature moment for Tyler Clipper. One one going to the bottom of the eighth. Fired up. In a tie game, and he gave him a great pitch sequence. Well, full count of one, two. Change up misses in the dirt, one and zero. Oh. 
changeup outside in knee high. It's one one fastball. Knees in black. One and two. Curveball missed. Two and two. Fastball wanted it up and in missed and then throws a changeup three and two. Wasn't a strike, but a tough pitch to lay off when you've got such one of the great changeups in the game today. Well, a lot of the work around the leadoff walk in McCutcheon out. Now the former Philly Antonio Bastardo will pitch the bottom of the eighth for the Pirates. Bastardo, 29 years old, six years with the Phillies, traded to the Pirates in the offseason. He's had a little better year. With Pittsburgh this year, that he's had the last couple of seasons in Philadelphia. Curtis Granderson will lead off. The thing about Pistardo is he can walk the ballpark if you let him. Granderson won for three tonight. He doubled back in the third inning. Granderson takes a fastball for a strike. That was the third inning when the Mets had second and third and nobody out. With their three, four, and five hitters coming up and didn't came up empty. Apps struck out Cespedes, got a rebate to pop up, and struck out Murphy to get through it. That's got their only run on a solo home run by Cespedes, leading off in the sixth. Jared Hughes was perfect in relief, retired all five batters, and now Bastardo facing Granderson, Cespedes, and a rebate. Curtis Granderson. Has homered against 29 major league teams. The only one he's never homered against, the Pirates. Terry is familiar getting ready for the night. Curtis hit his 20th home run of the year yesterday. Grounds this one down to first, right behind the bag to Alvarez for the first down. Our next SNY telecast will be the final game of this series Sunday afternoon. Matt Harvey's start. Our coverage begins at 12:30 Sunday. We'll be on PIX 11 tomorrow for the night game against the Pirates. Uh -huh. Well, the rally parakeet has been immortalized. Well, I've been told that it's a canary. Yeah, I've been told it's a goldfinch too, but it's not it, a goldfinch. It, to us, it will always be the rally parakeet, okay. even if it's not. We're not ornithologically correct. Technically, it's a canary. <laughs> well, here's Cespedes without the yellow sleeve. Didn't need it to hit his 20th home run of the year, leading off in the sixth inning. His second is a Met. He's also going to double tonight, so the extra base hits continue to pile up for Cespedes. He now has 55 extra base hits this year. Makes a big cut. The high fastball all with two. There is that fastball that he likes, and he'll swing, and you can go up the elevator with him a little bit. On a rebound on deck. Pirates one run, five hits. The Mets one run, seven hits. A solo home run on each side is all. Well, start to ahead 0 and 2. But this watch is wide, one and two. When Bastardo first came up with the Phillies, the first two years, he was a flamethrower, and then his fastball eluded him. One two coming to Cespedes. Oh, bounces the changeup. Spike that one. Two. Grounded toward the hole, base hit. And a Cespedes with his third hit of the night, and the Mets have the time breaking run at first with one out. Well, guarding the lines, and I am a proponent of that, leaves a big hole between short and third. Now, Juan Uribe 
was 0 for 3 tonight struck out popped up and flied out. He has his rips though. The starter does not hold runners well would Cespedes think about trying to swipe one. I haven't I'm not sure I'm not so sure I just haven't. Seen enough of Cespedes. It's only got four stolen bases this uh, year. My inclination is he's not. Estardo's well, given up seven stolen bases with none caught this year. It's a lot for a relief pitcher. It would be a good time for one. Not a very big lead. Ricky Henderson always said lefties are either impossible to steal on or the easiest to steal right. on. Yeah. Well, he would know. 13th game for Cespedes with the Mets. Already his sixth multiple hit game. He's got three hits tonight. Murphy on deck. Maribe late on the fastball, one and one. Here are the career stolen base numbers for Cespedes, who with his 20th home run tonight has now hit 20 or more in each of his first four major league seasons. One one from Bastardo, and a rebate fouls it back. SNY Super Slow Motion is brought to you by your Mercedes-Benz Tri-State dealers. Visit them on the web at searchmercedes.com. One and two to Juan Arribe. Fly ball right field. Polanco has it measured. Two out. So Sesman is still at first with two away and has left to Daniel Murphy who's had a good night at the plate. A single and a double. He's two for three to extend his hitting streak to 10 games. He's had a lot of looks at Bastardo back from his Phillies days. He's three for 12 for the home run against him. Daniel up to 283. Of uh, the 80s, huh? <laughs> it's a little distracting, isn't it, if you're the hitter? Um, you'd be surprised at you how focused you could be. Well done down that left field line. Well, one from Bastardo. Murphy fouls it off. Well, Friday nights the last couple of weeks have been awfully exciting for the Mets. The Flores walk off home run against the Nationals two weeks ago, and then that great game last Friday in St. Petersburg. Murphy had the the big home run that got the Mets even, and they pulled it out in the ninth. Yep. See if they can do it again here. Keep it rolling.
There goes Cespedes. Murphy pulls one and a oh. great stop by Alvarez for the third out. With Cespedes in motion, Murphy hit a bullet and Alvarez, not known for his defense, makes a terrific play to get the Pirates through the bottom of the eighth. What a play. Back in his hometown and showing some leather. Highway robbery to the ninth, 1-1. One, one. Question: The only three players with 300 hits for the Mets and the Pirates. Frankie Tavares, Frank, Frank Thomas. Thomas. Wow! I didn't know Frank Thomas was around long enough. And then Bobby Bonilla. How about that? I thought Tim Foley might be on that list. Jerry's familiar on to pitch the ninth inning in the tie game. Ramos Ramirez leads off against him. Ramirez 0 for 3 tonight. Well, Familia has certainly gone back on track after his post All Star game slump. Well, there are his numbers. He's still a little not as precise as he was in the first half. But every time he's been out now, after that little blip he had, he's been getting better and better. Seven straight scoreless outings. No runs, five hits, no walks over that span. And Ramirez pops one up. Mm. Flores a long way out with Cespedes playing deep, but Cespedes will get there. One away. Well, that no doubles defense sometimes that shallow outfield spot is a concern, but Cespedes with plenty of time to get under it. That's when it pays to have a bunch of jackrabbits out in the outfield. Cespedes can fly. So one out and nobody on that. Jung Ho Gong was one for three tonight had a hit and run single back in the fourth. Takes the sinker for ball one. There it is. No, it's gone. That's how you pronounce it, and that's how you spell it. Of course, we have a huge Korean community here in Queens, and they've come out in force to watch Gong. Remember the first time that Chan Ho Park pitched here, there must have been 20,000 folks here specifically to see Park. And 
uh, Gong is a phenomenon. We mentioned he's the only position player ever to come out of the Korean baseball organization and play in the big leagues. And he has had a very good rookie year. Familiar behind him, 2 0. And Gong pops one up. This will be Murphy's. Jammed him. Two hands for Murph, two out. Coming up tonight, Geico Sports Night. Chris Carlin will be in the chair after the postgame show. Rex Ryan had something to say. It's hard to believe. No, he has plenty to say. <laughs> he often does. Giants have their preseason opener tonight. Chris will love all that. So does Chris. Chris is a very funny man. I like Chris. So do I. <laughs> well, he, he, could have, he has a good enough sense of humor to be on this show. Yes, he could. Here's Pedro Alvarez is one for three. The base hit to left field his last time up. Let's tighten up the hole a little bit against him this time. And he goes after that sinker, nothing at one. Just keep the ball away from this young man. He's got one thing in mind. He wants to get himself a piece of cheese middle in and wrap it around a foul pole. 17 home runs this year, and he's been hot lately. Made that great play in the last half inning. Oh, good slide. Is that a slider or was yes, that a it. splitter? No, I think it was a slider. Let's see. No, you're right. I have seen him throw it that hard before. 94. Going two to Alvarez. Off the glove of Familia into no man's land, and Alvarez will beat it out. So, an infield hit for Alvarez prolongs the inning. Well, a pitcher reacting, and if he lets it go, Flores got it covered. Doesn't run well. But you can't blame him. In the Pirate bullpen, Mark Melanson, in case the Pirates get the lead, Archimedes Caminero, in case they don't. One of the great names in, in, in life, Archimedes Caminero. Sean Rodriguez up for the first time, took over defensively in left field for Travis Ishikawa. And Rodriguez takes a slider off the plate, ball one. Sean Rodriguez, the former Tampa Bay Ray, hitting just 216, but he's got a little pop, he's hit three home runs this year. Rodriguez has been a godsend for the Pirates because he can play everywhere. And he has. And he takes a letter high strike with a slider, one and one. Chris Stewart on deck. Alvarez at first, not blessed with great speed. One and one to Rodriguez. And then this is below the knees, two and one. Bartolo Colon went the first seven, a lot of run on five hits. Tyler Clippard issued a leadoff walk, but then got the next three hitters and struck out McCutcheon to end the eighth. Familia got the first two outs here in the ninth before Alvarez's infield hit. And now trying to send it to the bottom of the ninth, still tied. That's a lot of Kadir leading off in that bottom of the ninth. Rodriguez laces one to right field. On comes Granderson, and he makes the running grab. Side retire. The mid gets the job done in the top of the ninth. Now the Mets will bid for the walk-off. Kadir, Flores, and a record due up. Mets and Pirates tied 1-1.
Last of the ninth, each team with a solo home run. Neil Walker in the first. Yoenda Cespedes in the sixth. Then we go to the bottom of the ninth. Mets and Pirates, two teams that have been playing lights out lately, and uh, they're playing about the way you expect. Well, it's a very competitive game, and the crowd's really into it. Uh, this is what you expect when you play up two top teams that are that are playing each other. Uh, it's exciting baseball, and I, you don't need an eight-eight ball game. It's one one games are. are are exciting, well pitched games. Archimedes Camonero on to pitch the bottom of the ninth, and he throws a first pitch sinker that Gadire flails at, nothing and one. Gadire 0 for 3 tonight. Flores and Wrecker do up behind him. And Gadire swings at the slider and misses, and it quickly it's 0 and 2. You know, like I said, one of the great names in baseball. Archimedes Camonero. That's nice. That's a seven walk off wins this year, trying for number eight tonight. The guy on deck, on the floor, has ended their last walk off victory against the Nats two weeks ago. 99 miles an hour from Count Arrow. The Pirates have a great bullpen, and so naturally they've been very successful in one run games. They both played the same number of one run games. And we're ahead of ourselves talking about extra innings. Mets are trying to prevent that from happening. The guy are hanging in against the laser Camonero. Oh, struck him out with a splitter. And that's the first down. His parents clearly were enamored of the classics. Archimedes, Euclides, yes, Caminero. Yeah, sounds like a Greek and Roman. Yeah, a little bit of Troy. One out here's Flores. He reminds me a little bit of how. Uh, Guante used to throw. Remember him with the Pirates? See that Guante? Well, Camonero put in some time with the Marlins the last couple of years, but little enough that he still qualifies as a rookie at age 28. Flores drives one down the line. Foul. Mm. Just foul. A little bit too quick on that hanger. Yep. It's around two feet foul. Anthony Wrecker on deck. Slowly hit. Gong on the charge. Wide throw. Alvarez can't make the tag. And Flores is safe. Flores saying that he tagged him. Bob Davidson giving him no satisfaction. And Clint Herno will wait for his replay guy to let him know whether to challenge. Did he tag him? Did he not tag? If he tagged him, he's out. It's just tough to tell. Uh, Bob oh. Davidson said he missed him, and unless he got he him got on the it, arm, he got it on the arm. I think this is going to be overturned. Did he get him on the arm? Because he sure didn't get him on the back. And the Pirates are challenging the call. Bob Davidson, the veteran umpire at first base, said safe. So they need clear and convincing evidence to overturn. It does appear as though he might have tagged him on the arm. Is it? Enough evidence. I thought he got his left arm. Watch the reaction to Kadair after he got tagged, too. Wilmer, I'm sorry. But Wilmer busting right down the line. It looks like he got him. Fans don't think so. Well, in the replay center in New York, Ted Barrett's crew and Mike Winter's crew are pouring over the evidence. And we'll find out. Either way this call goes, it, 
I can't second guess. Here we go. It's quick. Now they're going to call him out. Yeah, I think it's so the right call. Turn the call and say the tag was made properly. I, I I have to agree, Gary. Do you? So Alvarez, who made a great play to rob Murphy of a hit in the eighth, able to make that tag for the satisfaction from replay umpires to get the second out. And he's been the one guy that's the the big weak link in the infield defense. He saved Gong an error there. Yes, he did. The spot and made a Rob Murphy of a double. I think, he got, I think he gets him right under the arm of, by the elbow. Yes. On the yes. Uniform, if not yes, nothing yes. Else. On the forearm. Wrecker broken back grounder for a base hit. So Anthony Wrecker, who had not had a hit since June the 3rd, breaks an 0 for 22 spell with a two out hit after the delay. And now Michael Conforto will come up to pinch hit. Jammed him. Fastball in. Now, I know you're not supposed to take your catcher out of the game, but wouldn't you be inclined to use a pinch runner here? I just think he can't do it. I mean, they really don't have anybody on the bench who runs. You could, you know, it would have to be a pitcher or Darno. You don't right. want to use two people. I mean, Darno isn't that much faster than, than Reckless. That oh, won't matter so much. It would probably be John Neese. I mean, he'd be the obvious guy. But Recker is going to stay in and run for himself as Ray Searage, the pitching coach, talks to Caminero, giving him the scouting report on Conforto, who will be seeing for the first time. So Conforto will get his second pinch hitting appearance. He got the first one night before last and popped up. With the potential winning run at first and two out of the bottom of the night. Yankees got a huge home run from Carlos Beltran in the top of the eighth and went in front of Toronto 4 3 as they go to the ninth. Record at first and two out. And Conforto hits one in the air to left center field, ranging over McCutcheon onto the warning track. He makes the catch. And we're going to extra innings. Conforto gave it a good ride. Comes up a little short. And we head to the 10th inning at City Field with the Mets and Pirates tied at one.
Nearly a full house, better than 38,000 on hand for a terrific Friday night tilt between the Mets and the Pirates. Extra innings on SNY is brought to you by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on their most exciting lineup ever. Shop ChooseNissan.com. Now the Mets, seven and two in extra inning games this year, will send Bobby Parnell to the mound for the tenth inning. Well, Bobby's done a fine job. Came out real strong, guns blazing when he came off the DL. Hit a little hitch there, and now he's been throwing much better. Walks are up a little bit. That's gotten a scoreless inning apiece out of Tyler Clifford and Jay Reese Familia. Arnell pitching for the second straight day. He got the final three outs in the Mets' lopsided win yesterday. Chris Stewart, the number eight hitter, leads off. Francisco Cervelli has come out on deck to pinch hit. So Clint Hurdle is going to use his second catcher here in the tenth inning. And Stewart takes a strike from Parnell. Stewart one for three at a base hit back in the third. Since then he's grounded out and struck out. There's Cervelli. He's had a very good year for the Pirates. And Stewart lays off the curveball one and one. So Clint, if the leadoff for Stewart gets on base, Hurdle can leave his pitcher in the hit and sacrifice and not use a bench player. Or he can send up a starting pitcher who Correct. might have more experience bunting than Caminero. Right. Clint's always chewing that gum hard. Line base hit. Chase toward the line by Cespedes. Stewart takes a hard turn and holds with a leadoff single. Well, let's see what Mr. Hurdle does. Second head of the game for Stewart. Pinch runner. We're going to get Starling Marte to pinch run. And he's going to hit Cervelli. So he's going to burn two players. Now Cervelli. Well, he's got, if he's going to pinch run for Stewart, now he's got to bring Cervelli in anyway. Good point. And you can go to hit and run too. Cervelli's a good guy to hit and run. So there's an element of surprise here. It's not a foregone conclusion that you're bunting. So this will leave Clint with one bench player left to switch hitting infielder Pedro Florimon. So Parnell gives up a leadoff hit and now has trouble to contend with, with Cervelli coming up to pinch hit. Cervelli 0 for 1 in his career against Parnell. One for four as a pinch hitter this season, hitting an even 300 on the year. He has three sacrifices. Good. And not giving it away if he was playing to bunt. Cipelli is another one of those cut and slash hitters. Goes the opposite field, a good hit and run guy. Reban on the grass at third to guard against the bunt. And he's ready to swing and takes ball one. Uribe in tight on the line. Polanco. Hitter Gregory Polanco on deck. Nobody up in the Mets bullpen. This is Parnell's inning. Clipper worked a one, two, three, eighth after a leadoff walk. And then Familia, a scoreless ninth. One and to Cervelli. Mm. And now two and oh. So it's not coming easily for Parnell tonight. So situation hitting here, folks. This is when the late in the ball game when the chips are on the table. This is when you want to have situational hitters up here. Guy that can hit the ball between the hole and it's first and third, nobody out, and the Mets would be in a world of trouble. Marte, the pinch runner, excellent speed. Mm. Now it's 3 0 to Cervelli. Well, if it goes to 3 and run, 1, you can run Marte. Marte has 22 stolen bases this year. Held out of the lineup because of a, a sore left hand. But nothing affecting his wheels. There's a strike three and one. Okay, we'll see if Marte is on his horse. I say he is. The 
aggressive lead. Cornell yeah, checks in. Marte runs. Cervelli cracks one foul. Low bridging his third base coach, Rick Sofield. Three and two. So Clint got your memo. Same thing here. Is running three and one, he has to be running three and two. There he goes. Cervelli hits one through the hole, a base hit. Marte heads for third. Cespedes will not make the throw, and the Pirates have runners at the corners and nobody out in the top of the tenth. Nice clutch hitting. The whole key to that bat was Parnell falling behind three and out. Oh. Had the pitch three and one and three and two, Gary. Couldn't walk. And when you're running, it doesn't matter where you get the base hit. When you got the speed of Marte, it's first and third, and the Pirates are in trouble. And you see him peek over his shoulder, knew exactly where the ball was, never hesitated. So the Mets are in a mess here in the top of the tenth. First and third, and nobody out. Carlos Torres. Quickly to work, but this one's on Parnell. He'll be facing Gregory Polanco, the leadoff hitter, left hand batter, and he can do just about anything. He can bunt in this spot, swing the bat. Mets got to bring the infield in. They can't concede a run here, Gary. The infield will be in, so let him swing. You got the speed of Marte at third. Cervelli is the runner at first. And the Mets will have the infield up all the way around. Polanco already has a bunt hit in this game. So he's got that in his arsenal. Murph it real tight on the grass. Flores a little deeper. And Polanco first pitch swinging lines went into center field and the Pirates take the lead Marte in to score three straight hits against Parnell to start the top of the tenth Polanco with the go ahead hit and it's two to one Pittsburgh. And I believe there comes Terry. Fastball up good level swing by the youngster. Bobby Parnell pitching for a second straight day and just didn't have it today. Consecutive hits by Stewart, Cervelli, and Polanco played a run. Pirates looking for more, and Parnell will take his exit. Carlos Torres coming in. Mets down two to one of the tenth. We'll be right back to City Field.
Rough night at the office for Bobby Parnell. Three batters, three hits, one run. And he leaves it to Carlos Torres to clean up the rest of the mess. First and second, and nobody out. Neil Walker, the batter. Walker homered back in the first inning. And takes a first pitch cutter for a strike. Well, he hasn't pitched since Tampa, Gary. That was six days ago. With two innings, zero runs. In fact, on the 14th of August, this is only his second appearance this month. Which is quite a turnaround for Torres, who was so overworked at times the last last year. Jammed him right down to first. Mm. The only play for Kadir is at the bag, and that's an advancing ground out for Walker, moving the runners to second and third. And I would assume it'll be a no-brainer for the Mets to walk McCutcheon. Not so sure with the Ramirez. We'll see. I if they go after him, I haven't got an issue. I can't imagine. It's a righty righty. We'll see. They're going to walk him. Okay. Now just you know what? You're going to set up a possibility for a double play. Mm -hmm. So this will be the third time McCutcheon will be walked tonight. First two are by Cologne. His only two walks of the game. And now he gets the intentional pass from Torres to fill him up for Ramirez, who's grounded into 17 double plays this year, which is tied for the most in the National League. So a real hard fought game here. And Ramirez is going to come up with a chance to break the game open. Or get an insurance run. Bobby's not happy about that I'm sure. So here's Ramirez who's 0 for 4 tonight. Grounded out and flight out three times. Base is loaded one out. Cervelli at third, Polanco at second, McCutcheon at first. A run home for the Pirates here in the tenth. That's a lot of the top of the batting order coming up in the bottom of the tenth. Torres trying to keep this a one run game. And Ramirez fouls back the first pitch fastball. Let's see what Ramirez has done. The base is loaded. Not quite Pat Tabler numbers, but not bad. And grand slams in his career. Pirates have not hit a grand slam this season. And Ramirez lifts one to right. That should get a run in. Cervelli tagging. Granderson makes the grab. Cervelli comes home to score the second run of the inning, and it's three to one Pittsburgh. Well, big insurance run right there. Veteran hitter, no I no intention to pull and be a headline tomorrow with a grand slam. He's getting that run in. This is stretch run time. He got what 46 games left after tonight, or, or on or about there. Every game is so critical. Polanco went to third on the. Fly ball as well, and now Jung Ho Gong bats with first and third and two out. Oh, good heads up play because now it opens up that hole between first and second because Kadir's got to hold the runner on. That's why it's so important to have a strong arm in right field. And a nice stop by Wrecker. That saved a run. Very nice. Tonight is one for four to hit and run single back in the fourth. Mm. And he takes a fastball strike one and one. One one to Gong. And he fouls away at the cutter. And now it's one and two. Melanson getting ready for the save opportunity. Of course. You know, the Pirates have won seven of their last eight extra inning games after struggling in extra innings earlier this year. Of course, they've turned everything around since that 
early season stumble. And they got it all started with a sweep of the Mets back in May. Since then, they have the best record in baseball. Torres checks in on McCutcheon. Two to gone. Just got a piece of the curveball. Pedro Alvarez would be next. In the bottom of the tenth, the Mets have Lagares, Granderson, and Cespedes due up. Gone oh. with a check swing. He went around and foul tipped it. Strike three. Inning over. But the Pirates cash two in the top of the tenth. Chris Stewart led it off with a base hit against Bobby Parnell. And then with a the runner going, Cervelli got Marte over to third. Polanco with a hit. And the Pirates score two and lead 3 1. Stays in to catch. Sean Rodriguez moves from left field to first base. Pedro Flora, oh, that's Jin Ho Gong, comes in, uh, moves from shortstop to third. Pedro Floramon comes in to play shortstop. And Starling Marte, who scored the go ahead run, stays in in left field. And the new pitcher is the Pirate closer, Mark Melanson. And there goes the entire bench for the Pirates, and Melanson has been their closer. 35 of 36 need I say more right handers that's interesting seem to hit him almost 300 lefties no chance doesn't walk anybody and he's given up only two home runs this season relies primarily on a terrific cutter and he will face the top of the Mets batting order Lagares Granderson and Cespedes in the bottom of the tenth with the Mets down three to one. Garris one for four tonight, singled back in the third inning. Clint Hurdle pulling out every available stop to shore up his defense for this bottom of the tenth behind Melanson. And Lagaris hits one down the right field line, a foul ball. Well that hit. Wow. But foul all the way. Melanson was acquired from the Red Sox. In that Joel Hanrahan trade 
back in 2012 in the offseason. Remember, he began his career with the Yankees back in 2009. Now in his third year with the Pirates, two time All Star. One and one to Lagares with Granderson on deck. And Juan takes a strike. One and two. Breaking ball bounces in two and two. Lanson took over as the pirate closer from Jason Grilly. Good thing he didn't do that with Mallards on base on the rubber. That would have been a ball. Don't ever want to drop the ball. No. You're on the mound. Interesting shoes he's got on. 2 2 to Lagaris. And he fouls it all. To stay alive. You like those shoes? No, I did not. We could get you a pair. No. <laughs> the Yankees held on to beat Toronto 4 to 3. Andrew Miller struck out Troy Tulowitzki with the tying and winning runs in scoring position to end it. So the Yankees go back in first place by half game. 2 2. And Lagaris pokes one foul. Good turn of bat here for Juan. Going to get on base any way he can to get the tying run to bat. That's a jumped out in front of Matt Kane and the Giants. 1 0. They've got Max Scherzer on the mound tonight. Seventh pitch of the at bat to Lagaris. And he mm. takes it inside. Full count. And that was the front door slider. And it missed. Well, Lagaris has only drawn 12 walks this year, over 370 at bats. Terrific patience here to run it full against Melanson. 3 2. Line right center base hit. That'll go to the wall. Lagaris pulls in at second base with a leadoff double. As good and at bat as Juan Lagaris has had all season. Well, this was a really fine at bat. Gets that slider, goes the other way, and Juan, who was struggling so woefully. Didn't play for quite some time, and it seems like kind of cleared his head. And he's seven for 15 now on this homestand with four extra base hits. So now the tying run will come to bat in a three-to-one game. And how big does that sack fly by Ramirez look now? Precisely. Granderson one for four tonight. And the curveball bounces away. That'll send Lagares to third. Good eye. Curtis has not been fishing after bad pitches in the dirt. He's really become very patient, but still aggressive. Granderson two hits and five career at bats including a home run against Melanson. And he takes inside 2-0. Oh. Joanna Cespedes who's having a huge night is waiting on deck. Much more formidable lineup waiting their turn to bat. Two and zero to Granderson, and he drives one down the line. Foul. Mm. He's really swinging the bat. Good. Mark Melanson, in each of his last two save opportunities, in a situation like this where he had a multiple run lead, gave up a run in each one, hung on each time. 
So he's not been as sharp as lately. You know, the Mets try to get to him here in the bottom of the tenth with the tying run at bat and nobody out. And it's outside to Granderson, three and one. Ferdinand said his 20th home run yesterday. And he drives this one out to right field, but Polanco goes back to get it. Tagging and scoring is Lagares, but that's a huge out from Melanson. Granderson tagged that ball, but he settles for a sacrifice fly that cuts the Pirate lead to three to two. Josh, did he get that one towards the end a little bit? Had a lot of topspin on it. I thought he smoked this. No, in the fat. Looked solid off the bat, but it's merely a sack fly, and the Mets are still a run shy with Cespedes at the plate, one out and nobody on. Cespedes tonight, single double home run. So three straight save opportunities now. Melanson's given up a run, but trying to again slam the door when he needs to. Gotta keep the ball away from Cespedes. Looking for his first four hit game of the season. Ball and a strike. On a rebay on deck. Curveball finds oh, the plate. The first one he's gotten a strike with. Look how low and down the ground Cervelli got. This is like hurts my hamstring to look at it. But a beautiful breaking ball. Oh, he's leaving himself exposed there. Jeez. Couldn't do that with men on base, could he? And Cespedes chases, does not run to first base, and so Cervelli just goes over to tag him. And that's the second out. Out of run, don't you? Yes, I agree. All breaking stuff. So the Mets are down to their final out. Giants just tied up the Nats 1 1 on a Matt Duffy home run off Max Scherzer in the first inning. Rebay is 0 for 4 tonight. And he takes the cutter outside and stopped the swing in time. Rebay 0 for 2 in his career against Melanson. Two out and nobody on. Mets down a run in the bottom of the 10th. Mm. And he chases that cutter and it's one and one. Melanson's got wicked curveball, wicked slider. And there's the curveball, and he gets ahead one and two, and the Mets are down to their last strike. Well, it took him a little while to get himself in the groove. Gave up the double to Lagares, a wild pitch, fell behind Granderson, survived Granderson, and then struck out Cespedes. Now 1 2 to Uribe, and the curveball, he just got a piece to stay alive. Caminero will stand to be the winning pitcher, and Parnell will be the loser if Melanson can close it out. Again, the one two. And it's too high. This has been a terrific game tonight between two teams who hope to see each other 
in October. Both teams using the back of the rotation tonight. Both fifth starters pitched well. Cologne and Happ. Two two coming. And a rebate grounds one toward third. Right behind the bag is Gong. The long throw on target and the ball game is over. And the Pirates win it. Two runs in the top of the tenth off Bobby Parnell. The Mets respond in the bottom. Come up a little shy. And the Pirates take the opening game of the series 3-2 in 10. Well, terrific ball game. And you Met fans out there, you didn't think they were going to win every game the rest of the year. This was a real tough ball game. 1-1 extra in it in the beginning with two solo shots. The Mets went down with a fight. They got a run in the bottom of the ninth. But the Pirates show why they are one of the best teams in the National League. A real tough ball game. So Melanson staggers to his third straight save. As the Pirates take the opening game of the series, they've now won all four meetings with the Mets so far this year. For the Mets, just their third loss in their last 14 games. As the Pirates win it in 10, 3 to 2. And uh, this was a fun game to watch, and the Pirates showed that their bullpen is solid and one of the reasons why they've been so successful in one run games. Well, you know, and also, I think the most important thing coming out of this ball game is that uh, uh, Cologne threw a very fine ball game. He went very strong seven innings. He's been struggling a little bit before the All Star break, so that's another good thing for the Mets as far as their pitching is concerned. They're in every ball game, their pitching is going to keep them in the game. Hey, this team over here came in with the third best earned run average in the National League. They showed it tonight. It's bypassed a huge opportunity earlier in the game, second and third, and nobody out. That winds up coming back to haunt them as they fall in 10. The Jeep game summary as Bobby Parnell didn't retire a batter, gave up two runs, and winds up the losing pitcher tonight. New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by Jeep. Visit Jeep.com today. By Geico, over 75 years of savings and service. By Budweiser, still brewed the hard way. This Bud's for you. By DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the New York Mets. And by Hyundai. Hyundai invites you to get in your comfort zone with the most advanced in Lantry yet. Visit your Hyundai dealer today. Final score tonight in 10. The Pirates 3 and the Mets 2. Game two of this series on Picks 11 tomorrow night with John Neese on the mound. Our coverage begins at 6.30 on Picks 11 tomorrow night. Next SNY telecast the final game of the series Sunday with Matt Harvey pitching. Coverage begins Sunday at 12.30 on SNY. Now for Keith Hernandez, Steve Gelbs, and our entire SNY crew, I'm Gary Cohen at City Field. Time for WB Mason postgame live. Let's join Gary Apple and Nelson Figueroa.